Valerabine is a T-cell specific agent that has been approved for relapsed and refractory uh, T-cell malignancy such as T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma. And we're here at OSCO to talk about its use in newly diagnosed patients. To do that, I'm with Dr. Kimberly Dunsmore, who is Chair of Pediatrics at Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine, and she is also the uh, primary investigator for the Children's Oncology Group. This is not just a large trial. It is barely like the largest trial ever conducted for newly diagnosed T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma. What was the impetus of this study first? Since this is so big, obviously it's a, it's a big question. Yes, it's a big question and I think um, prior to the study the event-free survival for that group of patients was less than it was for the B-cell lymphocytic leukemia patients and we needed a new drug and alarabine uh, was what we needed at the time but we needed to prove that it would be both safe and efficacious thus requiring a large trial. And you've got like seven or eight years worth of, of We data do. Now? We have about about eight years worth, yes. So describe how the trial was conducted. So the trial uh, was conducted uh, in upfront patients. They could have T-cell leukemia and later we actually added T-cell lymphoma patients. So it was a randomized trial that asked two studies questions. One, whether nalirabine added into a backbone of chemotherapy would be effective and safe uh, for patients with T-cell leukemia. And the second question was, what's the best way to give methotrexate? Is it high-dose methotrexate or escalating-dose methotrexate? So it's kind of a forearm... Uh, it is. It's a two-by-two two pseudo-factorial design. Right. So you have previously reported the safety and fe feasibility of nilarabine in the setting. So the question now is, did it improve outcomes? It, it did improve outcomes. And so there was, an imp there was a survival advantage for those patients who received nilarabine. Their four-year disease-free survival is 88% versus those who did not at 83%. And for all patients in the trial, the overall survival for T-cell leukemia patients is 90%. How about overall toxicity and neurotoxicity? It was it was very it was the same across all four arms for neurotoxicity, wow. and that was a that was an issue for us. Now, Larabine is known to have some serious uh, neurotoxic uh, effects, but we found that uh, grade three and four uh, neurotoxicity scores were equal across all four arms. So, with all the years put into this, and uh, now we have some uh, real data. What's the take-home message? What's the clinical message you want to get across? That we have a great clinical regimen that has great safety and efficacy for T-cell leukemia patients, for children and young adults, and that their survival is better than it has ever been. So what are other questions that we need answered besides that? So I would say if we need to answer if nilarabine will still be effective when you effective when not being used in a protocol that requires cranial irradiation. But I have hopes that it will be since on the nilarabine arms there were much fewer CNS relapses. So congratulations. After this many years you really have to be happy you're on the other side of this. Uh, I am and I really want to give thanks to my co-chair Stuart Winter and everybody at COG and mainly to Gertrude Ellion who is the Nobel laureate who actually designed nilarabine.